that freedom cannot arise without order. And I think that's true. Like the point that I tried to make in the porn video is people were saying that, well, if we ban pornography, you're infringing upon freedom. Or if we ban heroin, you're infringing upon freedom. Well, if you're addicted to pornography and you're addicted to heroin, are you really free? So I'm going to get back to your calls here in a minute. I have a guest and I have John Doyle with me. John Doyle, he's the host of the web show Heck, Heck Off Comedy. Heck Off Comedy. Oh, Heck Off Comedy. I guess get rid of the comedy, get out of here. And uh, John Doerr came highly recommended to me, so I'm looking forward to talking to him. John, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're welcome, man. I appreciate you coming on. So I am looking forward to talking to you. I hear that you're a smart young man. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> and uh, you're white, right? I am, in fact, white. And as a white young male, you're not afraid to tell the truth, I hear. Uh that I, I would hope not. Um, I guess if that's what people are saying, then that's good. Yeah, that's the rumor. Mm -hmm. So um, your show is called Heck Off Commie. What does that mean? Uh, exactly as you described it, just telling the communists to just go away. And just a, a bit more of a, I guess you would say, meme-esque format, something that's more uh, pertinent to my generation, the younger people. And uh, it's a very interesting title. What What was going on in your life or in your world that caused you to to come up with that title and present it on your show like that? Well, specifically, I just drank a bunch of coffee. Um, so I was really caffeinated and I just sort of <laughs> had that idea as a result of that. But with my experience with kids my age, there's sort of not only this sort of, uh, uh, they're not only them like apologizing for socialism or for communism, they're even promoting it and trying to normalize it within the realm of discussion for people our age. And so I kind of think of it as like a second red scare in a way. And so that's why when I was trying to think of a name for the show, I didn't want to, no offense to you, I didn't want to do the uh, the John Doyle show or something like that. Right, so I wanted right. To make a name for it. So that's what I came up with. I like the name. How old are you? I'm 19. You're 19? Yes, that's sir. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, man. So were you raised with uh, conservative parents or something? Yeah, my parents were, they voted Republican, but my dad was definitely much more involved with politics than my mom. Um, but my parents were divorced when I was eight. And so he wasn't really necessarily there, you know, telling me what to think about everything. So this just sort of happened by itself, which I think is kind of cool. So even though he wasn't there, were you still raised with him or close to him? Were you still raised yeah. close to your father, even though he wasn't there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, good, man. And so I hear that you've been getting, or have you been receiving death threats uh, I did. on social media? Yep, yep. I got a death threat from this, uh, this Antifa character who was wielding a tennis racket, and he said that he was going to try and kill me, uh, Stephen Crowder, Hunter Avalone, and then uh, another young guy, Nick Fuentes, who I think you had on your show not too long ago. Yeah, I did. A smart mm -hmm. young man. And why, mm -hmm. why does he want to hurt, kill you? Uh, because I am a Nazi and a fascist, <laughs> according to him. And so, therefore, I deserve to die by tennis racket. What does it feel like, John, to be, you said 19? Yes. And hated by the world. White men especially are hated mm -hmm. by the people, so-called people of color around the world. What is that like for you being 19, knowing that you hate it to the point because you're white and if you should speak up, they try to shut you down by calling you a Nazi or white supremacist and all that. What is that like for you? For me personally, I find it somewhat empowering in a way. I kind of enjoy the, uh, the backlash that I receive and the hatred that's thrown at me because I know that it means that I'm being effective, even if in a small capacity. And I think that ultimately what I would like to do is inspire other people like myself to not be afraid to speak up because they're afraid of receiving that backlash and that hatred. So I'm not affected by it. You know, I, I'm not as demoralized by it, I would say. But I know for a fact that other people my age are, other young men are yeah. definitely affected by it negatively. I think it's very sad. I think it's a very evil thing to be telling our young men. It is. And I meet young white men all the time who, are, as you said, demoralized by it. They can't stand up, not realizing that if they stand up anyway, they'll get past it. But not to do anything about it is only making it worse. Absolutely. What would you suggest to those white guys who are afraid of the name calling and uh, uh, in some cases, personal uh, attacks? What would you say to them how to get over that? 
Um, I, the first step would probably be that whatever that ice breaking conversation would be like for me, it was in my AP US history class. And uh, our teacher was talking about white privilege and something like that. And so I spoke up and I said, that's not true. And I, I went through why um, I didn't think that was the case. And everyone kind of shot daggers at me. And I sort of had that moment where my heart was getting faster. And everyone was kind of like, you know, obviously not a big fan of what I was saying. But once you get over that, and you kind of realize that you have no obligation to be friends or associated with people who hate you because you're white or because you're a man or because you're conservative or whatever. You can kind of find a niche group of friends that are really going to stand by you if yes. they are even aligned with your values. And so when you have those people, um, you can basically do anything without having to worry about the backlash because it's like, okay, I don't care what this person, they don't even know me. I don't care what they think, but I have the respect and approval of my peers. Um, so that's that's how I went about it. But some people aren't even able to do that. Like some people aren't my age. They're even like in their 30s or 40s in the workforce and they're afraid to speak up because they might get fired for it. So in that case, it might even be better just to keep your mouth shut for the time being because, you know, they could take the money away from you and then you can't put food on the table for your families. Yeah. yeah. Do um, have your parents uh, encourage you not to be so bold to stop standing up? Uh, my mom and my grandma. Uh, cause they're, you know, they're, of they're course. afraid that, yeah, yeah they're afraid that, uh, I'm going to get beat up or something. Like I was watching the video of the death threat and, uh, I sent it to my mom and she was like terrified, but I was excited. Cause I was like, no, this means I'm making progress. And <laughs> she was like, no, they're going to come kill you. And I was like, do you know how many guns I have? Like, you shouldn't have so many guns. So that type of thing. But my dad's definitely in support of it. Right on. Amazing. Well, man, I admire that about you. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know that, but that's amazing to me. I'm glad at least one white guy is out there standing up and not giving in to the enemy like that. Mm -hmm. You uh, stood up for the white boy that got beat up on the uh, bus by the black kids yeah. uh, for supporting Trump. Yep. Tell me about that and what happened after you stood up for him. Um, after I posted the video, I think it was up for maybe 26 or 28 hours. And then I woke up the following, not the following morning, that was posted on Friday evening. And I woke up on Sunday morning and uh, they had deleted the video. And I checked my email and the timestamp was like one or two in the morning. So they did it when I was asleep. So I wouldn't really notice it until I'd already lost all the potential traffic. Um, and so I appealed it and they said that it, they had to delete it because it violated their community guidelines because it showcased a uh, uh, to minors engaging in what they call the fight. I would call it a mob beating. But so I appealed it and I told them that's ridiculous because that video is like 10 and a half minutes and only 30 or 40 seconds of it actually contains that footage and the rest of it is just analysis of that footage. And so then they understood that, okay, he's right. And so then they put it up and now there's an age restriction on it. And I think that's a matter of someone saw the video because I, I have a few dozen people, I'm sure. Every time I post a video, they flag it for whatever reason because they just don't want it to be up. And so what happens is if one of those gets across the desk of somebody who agrees with whoever is flagging it or disagrees with my message, they'll be inclined to, you know, even if it's not necessarily in violation of their guidelines, or maybe it is, they just are waiting for the green light, so they'll take the video down. But then when I appeal it, and it goes to someone who's maybe a bit higher up, maybe a bit more impartial, then they're going to be the ones to say, okay, this video is okay, you know, we'll just put an age restriction on it because it's violent for maybe 30 seconds. Yeah, that happened to Hake, uh, the Hake report here a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's amazing to me that when men like you, young men like you, being white, when you finally do stand up, then they fight against that. They don't want it to be known that there are white guys out there who are willing to stand up. Mm -hmm. And so they try to cut that off as well. But I'm glad you're not giving up, man. Thank you. And have you been attacked by any black people, any, any, of, them, any of those people saying anything to you for standing up for this white guy? Um, no, I, I'm sure it's in the comments section, but I try not to read the comments. I don't know if you watched the video, but I actually, I told a story about something similar that kind of happened to me. I didn't, I wasn't attacked, but when I was in high school, I went to school the day after Trump won the election and I had my hat on and, uh, there were these two black girls walking down the hallway and they made some comments to me about, you know, you have to take that hat off. You're going to get your ass beat. And I just kind of brushed them off. And then there was a hallway where all the black kids in my school used to hang out. And so these two girls went over there and told them, like, come look at this guy. And so then I got mobbed in my locker and they were all, you know, getting in my face and threatening me. And luckily I had some black friends. And so they sort of de-escalated the situation. But, yeah, it was just a very interesting situation to be in. Um, and, and again, like I was sort of looking at these people and getting mad, not because they were, you know, going to beat me up or whatever, but because I could see in their eyes that they weren't even really sure why they were mad at me. They yeah. just saw the hat. Yeah. thinking about whatever 
the media tells them or whatever the parents tell them. Um, and I, so I just, I remember thinking to myself, I'm about to lose teeth because of a hat. And then there's going to be no recourse. There's going to be no discipline because my school district definitely doesn't want that to make national news. You know, if they go and suspend a dozen black kids, they don't want that to be in the news. That's right. And did you tell your parents about that incident? I don't think I did. Um, I'm sure they know about it now. I'm sure they've seen the video, but I, at the time, I don't think I did tell them. Are you able to tell me what state you live in now? Michigan. Oh, Michigan. So this happened in Michigan? Yep. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Why didn't your parents let you go to school with black kids, knowing that they hate white people and white kids, and that when they go to these white schools, they become so violent and destructive? Why would they put you through that? Um, well, my school di district is actually a pretty good school district. It was in metropolitan Detroit, uh, but it was one of the best in the state. Um, and I don't, I don't think that my parents know, and I don't think that I know that black kids inherently hate white kids. I don't think that that's like unfailingly the reason that they're, they're upset with us or perhaps they want to attack us for supporting Trump. Um, so I don't think that either of them thought that just by putting me in that school that they were putting me in danger, per se. Yeah. Do you think a lot of white parents see it that way and they don't realize what their white children are going through? I don't know if I'd say a lot, but I, I've, I know some families that have expressed that. Amazing. So is it true that you made a video asking men to stop using porn? Yes. Really? How old were you when you did that, made that video? Uh, that was a few months ago. So I was, oh, I yeah, I was still 19. And what made you decide to do that? Um, I've been wanting to make a video like that for a while, but I don't know if you're familiar with this trend. There's this internet trend referred to as No Nut November, and it's a meme. Um, <laughs> basically, yeah, the joke is on the whole month of November, you abstain from porn just to, and masturbating just to see if you can. And so I knew that that would be the time when the conversation was happening on the internet. So I waited until November to make that video, um, and then it got it got an above average amount of views i would say for my channel which was cool and i you know i'm not going to take credit for this but there's been a discussion recently on the right um, particularly on twitter about whether or not we should regulate porn whether or not we should ban it, stuff like that and per my research i think that i'm the first guy that put out a video within this cycle about that so i like to think that perhaps i started the fire to a certain degree within that discussion because i think it's an important discussion to have certainly. it's very important and very impressive that being 19 that you would deal with it encouraging mm -hmm. them to stop doing that. Do you mm -hmm. know a lot of, I mean, do you know guys your age that are into porn? Oh yeah, I mean, every, every guy that I know that isn't outspoken about pornography, which is maybe one or two of my friends, they're, they're watching it and they're addicted to it. And we bully them for it, like within my, within my group. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you have to, you have to, you have to bully the, the, your, the guys that you're friends with, get them into line. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And did they stop? They have any, any of them tell you, well, uh, as a result of watching your video and listening to what you had to say, they stopped using it? Or, or being no one internet? that I know personally, but I have received a lot of messages from a lot of guys, and they've told me, some of them with a bit more detail than I would have liked, uh, but they've <laughs> told me that they were able to, you know, realize that they were addicted, and then they were able to overcome that, which is really great, because I can make a video about why the minimum wage shouldn't be raised to $15 an hour, and that's one thing, but when someone reaches out to you and say, I had this problem with my life, and you helped me overcome it, that's really touching, that's like really what it's all about, I think. And did you go to college? Uh, I did for a couple semesters. Oh, uh, oh! So you didn't graduate from college? No. No wonder you're so smart and brave. <laughs> yep. What made you stop going? Uh, I was sitting in classes, and at the at the time, I was trying to start the YouTube channel, and I wanted to be doing that. And then I was sitting in these classes, listening to professors. Just, I mean, I, my philosophy professor, for example, she was an open Marxist, and I was listening to her trying to explain these concepts to us, and I would listen and be able to detect her purposely manipulate arguments to, to make it seem like, you know, Marxism was the virtuous path and capitalism and all of that is evil. And I just remember trying to really rationalize why I was paying however many hundred dollars to sit in that class and I just couldn't do it. And so I, uh, I dropped out shortly after that and I started doing the YouTube full time. And then I was also working almost full time. You are amazing, amazing, man. That's Thank something you. else. Thank you. I wish all the guys would drop out of college for that reason. It's just mm -hmm. brainwashing, dumb down, dumbing down, and demoralizing. That's, I laugh because uh, you know how they have when they report the polling, they'll have the demographic of non-college educated white voters, and they always vote overwhelmingly conservative, and then the college educated white voters tend to vote liberal. And so they take this and they say, well, you can see that uh, 
you know, the people who are educated and therefore smarter, they vote liberal. But it's funny because it's like, what do you think would happen if you send someone to a school like that for four years where that's what they're taught? They're taught by leftists and they're taught by Marxists that these are the correct ways. Of course, they're going to come out like that because yeah. they're not going to listen to me. Not going to listen to some kid. They might not even listen to you, but some professor with a degree attached to their name, they're going to think that whatever <laughs> they say is true. I know. It's so dumb. Um, you are very impressive, Matt. Uh, what did your parents say when you dropped out of college? Uh, that was a fun day. I called my mom, and she was not happy about it. And so then I called my dad because I thought that he would be happier about it because he didn't go to college. He started his own business, and he's done very well with that. Yeah. So I thought that he would, you know, be a bit more yeah good for you you know you don't need to go to but he wasn't he was like no that was probably not a good idea because he didn't know at the time that i what i really wanted to do because i just hadn't had that discussion with him so in his mind i was just abandoning all options and i was just gonna you know become a bum or something become a beta, <laughs> beta so, beta. exactly, exactly. <laughs> are you an only child no i have two sisters and are they older yes and how are they doing uh they're they're doing okay my sister just graduated from college with a degree in psychology and then my oldest sister um who is technically my half sister she's doing okay she has a family and two kids they should have listened to you well you know, uh, i don't want to say anything in case they watch this but uh, that's <laughs> interesting that you interesting that you say that <laughs> they must admire you to the utmost and wish they had listened to you right we'll see we will see <laughs> So, uh, I, oh, someone want to know online, are you dating? No. You don't date? Uh, not actively, no. Good for you. And why not? I, I don't think that the state of women my age is worth investing time into right now. Amazing. Yeah, it's just, I mean, I don't know if how online you are, but I, I saw, do you know what TikTok is? I heard of, but I have no idea. It's kind of like, you know, YouTube, except all the videos are really short. And one of my buddies showed me a TikTok and it was of these college age girls. And there are these white blonde girls and they're in a circle. And then one by one, they all talk about how many guys they slept with that weekend and just all this degenerate activity. And I see stuff like that. And it just, you know, why would I waste time with that? It's just, I, I just, I can't. I have to focus on uh, building my brand, building my wealth and doing all this stuff. And then maybe in a few years, we'll focus on correcting some of that behavior, finding a girl that's not participating in that behavior. I'm going to have to keep up with you. I want to see how your life turned out as you get older. <laughs> this is amazing, man, that you're Thank you. 19 with this much common sense. It's hard to find a 19-year-old male of any color with so much common sense. Mm -hmm. I noticed that you wear tires and suits and things on your show. Why is that? Well, I used to... I sometimes would wear the the suits and then it would get really hot in this room and so yeah. I could kind of jump around, especially in the summer. But I told myself when I broke a hundred thousand subscribers, I was going to always wear suits just because I think it looks better. It looks more presentable. And so that's what I've been doing since then. It does. You make me want to go home and put on a suit. <laughs> I hate <laughs> you wearing... look more comfortable than I do though. I am, but I hate wearing suits. I used to wear them all the time, but I never liked it because you just feel so crowd. Well, I feel so crowded in them, right? Yeah, yeah. And so eventually, I just kind of start backing away from it a little bit. I still do it once in a while, but it really looked professional to do it to wear suits. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. really does. And so, are you a Christian? Yes. And what is, does it mean to be a Christian? Uh, I think it means to believe in God and to fear God and to to follow the doctrine. Uh, and to not let your own desires pollute your pursuit of that. What is your impression of other men and women who are calling themselves Christians? They have claimed Jesus as Lord and Savior, but they have no courage. They have no morals. They don't. They don't stand up. What's your impression of them? I am. I'm very. I don't. I don't want to speak too strongly against them, but I'm very uh, disturbed by that. And it's interesting, too, because when you read theology and you read the Bible, they even mention types of people like that. And so it's just very interesting to see these people that you know personally and realize that they are that type of person. Like they subscribe to Catholicism or to Christianity, so they say, but then they also are unfaithful to their spouses or perhaps they're lustful or, or uh, yeah. they, they overeat, just all, all sorts of stuff. Um, it's very off-putting, and I think that it's, it's harmed the perception that people have in this country towards Christianity as a whole, because Christians themselves have allowed themselves to drift so far away from what it truly means to be a Christian. So it's, I don't know how we can fight for Christianity or on behalf of Christianity if most of us don't even know what that means or we're not acting in accordance with it.
Wow. You know, you give me hope because I was thinking they don't make them like you anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't mm -hmm. see young men with so much character anymore. And it's like with the millennials, half of them are very talented when it comes to computers and things like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But the other half is brainwashed, dumbed down, and demoralized. Yep. But you seem to be a whole person, and I know it's because you dropped out of college as well. We'll go with that. I'll tell my mom you said that. <laughs> well, it sounded as though your parents, especially your father and mother, had a you know a good impression on you as well. But mm -hmm. I like the fact that you are a young man of character and courage. Thank you. I really do. I appreciate that. What's your impression of uh, you know who Nick Fontes is? I think his name Fontes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this whole turning point thing. What's your impression of what's going on with that? Are you aware uh, of what's happening with them? I've seen some stuff on the timeline on like my Twitter and stuff, but I haven't followed it too closely, but I actually, I met Nick at Politicon. Uh, and so we, we talked for a little bit and we kind of figured out where we disagree on certain things, but it was funny because he's, I don't know how you are perceiving this, but he and I both kind of reached a, a point of agreement that we're kind of like two young guys, two Catholics, you know, generation Z. We have very similar energy. We both were kind of into the same stuff growing up. So it, that was just a very uh, interesting conversation to have. So, but with the turning point thing, yeah, I watched some of the, uh, some of the highlights, I guess, from, I think it's referred to as the Groiper War. Um, and I couldn't really, I only saw a few questions, but I didn't really see a problem with any of the questions that were being asked. I don't know why everyone was, was so angry about them for asking those questions. Like one of the ones that I saw that I thought was actually a, a good question was, um, how do, uh, this is kind of a uh, profane was how does, you know, sodomy help, uh, I think promote the, the Christian message or, yeah. conservatism or something like that. I thought that was a perfectly good question to ask. And, you know, they got mad about it. And, you know, I think they started like, uh, singling people out from, from the lines and the crowds and stuff. And I don't know, I don't know what turning point purports to be. I don't really know what the Groiper war was uh, purporting to accomplish, but I know that turning point advocates themselves as these sort of, you know, free speech, willing to debate anybody about anything. And it seems to be fine when there's someone on the left that has a question, but if it's someone on the right that has a question, they didn't really want to be about it. It's almost as if they wanted to only promote their brand of what they perceive conservatism to be. And anybody that has a dissenting opinion was just to be shut down, which I think not only hurts conservatism, but hurts their cause specifically because people were kind of realizing that why should we take you seriously about free speech and, you know, uh, the marketplace of ideas if even you don't want to represent that when you have yeah. a microphone in your hand. I, uh, as you know, I interviewed Nick on mm -hmm. this show, and um, I was very impressed with him. I I don't remember meeting him before that, but I was very impressed with him mm -hmm. and the fact that he is a young white male who is not afraid to stand up as well. And I believe he's uh, he's Afro Latino. Oh, he, well, he looked white, <laughs> <laughs> but he's a very courageous young man too, and I like that. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, did you know that? Well, I've tried to get Turning Point. We have invited them on the show, but they won't come on. And um, so, yeah, I'm being told that Nick is 2% black and a little Latino. Is he part white, too, guys, James? Or uh, Nick? He's mostly white, I'm told. Mm -hmm. But um, I tried to get Turning Point on the show and mm -hmm. because I want to understand that how is it that they present themselves as a Christian organization as Christians, I guess. But yet they have some black guy on there who publicly saying that he has a husband. And I never heard yeah. of a black man with a husband. It blows my mind. <laughs> what do you think about all that? Well, yeah, I, I think Charlie's position on it was essentially that, you know, I, I won't allow my personal religious proclivities to uh, seep into my politics. And I think that's just that's just ridiculous. I mean, if you are conservative in the true sense, what you're trying to conserve is the values that this country holds, which are rooted in Christianity. Yeah. And so I, I just don't understand how you could divorce those things. Uh, it seems disingenuous to me. So do you think it's a cop out? I wouldn't, I don't know if it's a cop. I don't know Charlie personally. I, it might be just a, uh, sort of a, a, hip, a hypocritical thing that he's not realizing, or maybe he doesn't care about it, but I mean, it could very well be a cop out. So it defies common sense. Mm hmm. Amazing. So are you being uh, censored, um, what do you call shadow banned on, on YouTube and all that? Um, I don't know. I, 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 I've noticed a few things like, you know, sometimes they'll delete views or they'll delete likes from my videos. Uh, sometimes 
I'll post something that is particularly controversial and then I'll notice that, you know, it'll do really well and then all of a sudden it just stops. So I can't prove any of it, but I, I have a, a tendency to think that probably yes. Amazing. So I'm running out of time here. It is manhood hour on my end of the world. At least we'll be rebuilding the family by rebuilding a man. So mm-hmm. I got a, a few quick questions I want to ask you. Yeah. What is a man? I think a man is someone who is true to his convictions and true to virtue and morality, doesn't allow his own pursuits of lust or desire, whatever it may be, to interfere with that. Someone that provides and protects the pe- or provides for and protects the people that he cares about and people that are close to him. Um, someone that's true to God. I guess that would be my understanding of it. Also, the capacity to uh, reproduce. And what is freedom? Um, I would say freedom. That's a good question. I, hmm, what is freedom? You're hitting me with uh, the oldest questions in human history. <laughs> I'd say the ability to pursue what is good and what is right without being impeded by other things. I think that I think it was Edmund Burke who wrote that freedom cannot arise without order. And I think that's true. Like the point that I tried to make in the porn video is people were saying that, well, if we ban pornography, you're infringing upon freedom. Or if we ban heroin, you're infringing upon freedom. Well, if you're addicted to pornography and you're addicted to heroin, are you really free? That's is it right. a freedom to allow yourself to be addicted? I just don't think that that's true. I don't think that's in line with what is the true meaning of freedom. 100%. You're absolutely right. Are you in support of the Second Amendment? Oh, absolutely. Right on, man. Me too. I've got, uh, got the M1 Garand on the wall ready to go. Right on. Amazing. And, do you, uh, and the last question for this is, are you standing up for good? Yes. Do you realize that uh, you are very rare in America today? Unfortunately, yes. That's amazing, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, you got to wake up others, though. You and it. You got to impress other young men, and they, you you got to see a change because they just haven't had examples, man. They haven't seen other people really standing up for what is right. So I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to see it. Um, one last thing, someone on online want to know, do you think uh, something should be done about censorship? Uh, censorship within, I'm assuming they mean within the context of online conservatism. I think so. I, I'm not sure. Okay, right? yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I do think something should be done. I mean, the, the legality of it is basically questionable. I believe in the early to mid-1990s, the language was basically that these online platforms are going to be the new public square. Um and like right now with YouTube, for example, I think these companies are operating under a, uh, a platform status, or sorry, they're operating as publishers while, while purporting themselves to be a platform. Um, and I know that Prager has lawsuits pending. I think Steven Crowder was doing something like that. So yeah, I think that there's sort of this libertarian argument about, well, you know, you should just go make your own YouTube. You should just go make your own Twitter, and then you can say whatever you want to say on those. The problem with that is that If we go to some other platform, like let's say that we go to BitChute or something, we're just going to be in this echo chamber of all conservatives hanging out on BitChute. We already know what we believe, basically. The conversation is happening on YouTube and on Twitter and on Facebook. So that's where we need to be. And if we allow ourselves to be ostracized from from the discourse, then we're just going to, I guess, expedite the process of conservatism being... Uh, continuously othered, and uh, they're going to continue to depersonize us, and then we're just going to lose the battle. That's amazing. Absolutely right, man. You know, what's impressive about you, too, you have your own identity, and that's pretty cool. (laughs) Thank you. Even though you're conservative, even though you're Christian, you still have your own identity, and that's rare in America today. Mm Mm-hmm. Definitely. And it's been a joy talking to you, man. It's an honor to meet you. It's so Thank impressive. You. I'm glad that my producer insisted that we bring you on. He was so impressed with when he saw your video. So was James mm-hmm. from the Hake Report. Mm-hmm. I know that they had talked about having you on the Hake. Have you ever heard of the Hake Report? I have not. He's a, another conservative white guy with good hair. Okay. Do I have good hair? Oh, you have good hair. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I noticed conservative white guys who are strong have good hair. So maybe it's in the hair. It might be. Any last words or anything from you you'd like for us to know or how can they listen to your show or whatever? Yeah. Uh, you can go to YouTube.com and look up uh, John Doyle or Hack Off Commie. Uh, you can go to Facebook.com slash Comrade Doyle. 
hackoffcomedy.com. We have a website up now. And so, yeah, you'd be able to find everything through those. Well, John, it's been a pleasure talking to you. If I could be of any yeah. help at all, you only have to let me know. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And keep doing what you're doing, man. God is on your side. And if you don't get angry but speak up anyway, it's just going to get better for you. Yes, sir. Absolutely. God bless you, Josh. God thank you. For, you. Thank you for coming on, man. Absolutely. All right. Amazing. So now there's John and there's Nick. Fire, Nick Fuentes and James Hake fighting for good. Isn't that amazing? They out there. That was John Doyle. That was impressive, right? See, white people, you can stand up. It's okay. It's okay to be white. Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, and share the Just Lee Peterson radio show, folks. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it. 